Let's talk about sight links. What are they? When do they appear? And can you influence them? But really quick before we jump in, if you want more tips like this, please hit the subscribe button. I would love to see you back in the future. I have a lot more videos planned coming up. All right, so let's jump right in. We're gonna look at some site links. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of when site links appear, uh, and then we're gonna talk about how you can influence them. All right, so first of all, we have uh, a Google search pulled up here. Right now, I'm, I just searched for Dylan Howell Photography, and you can see the site links. Here are these links that show up underneath the main link. All right, so there's one domain here, and you can see the next result starts here, but all of these links where you see are here, more results from DylanInHelp.com, these are called site links. Now this is the traditional format of site links right here that you see on the screen. And typically this kind of site link only appears in branded search. So when you search for a brand specifically, you'll often see these site links, which bring in other pages from that domain besides the home page. You may find these in some other situations that are not branded search, but basically the idea is they're only gonna come up whenever Google is absolutely certain that what you meant when you typed in a query was to find a specific domain. When they're sure that that domain is the one that you are looking for, then they may also show some other pages from that domain in the results. Now, like I said, this is the traditional uh, presentation of site links, but there's another kind of site links that you may have seen as well. So in this search, I just did Columbia maternity photographers, and I have a couple of examples here of what I call inline site links. So these are also site links. You can see they're also internal pages from these domains that allow you to click to a different page than the home page directly from the search. Now, sometimes you will see these in regular head terms, in the main terms that you might be searching for. Uh, but in general, you don't see them quite as often in competitive terms, especially for local businesses. You will find them more often on informational searches. So in this case, I searched SEO for photographers. And you can see right here, here's Dylan's domain again, and then Foreground Web has them. These are site links, and we very frequently see these on long informational uh, articles. And if you notice, there's a little bit of a difference. Okay, so in this case, if I look at these, you can see in the very bottom left of the screen, you may not be able to see it, but this says kfeldmanphotography.com slash info slash galleries slash blog and slash investment. But if we go back over here and look at these site links, it's actually the same URL. You can't really see the URL here because of the breadcrumbs, but it's, it's dylanmhowell.com slash SEO for photographers slash, and then it has a hash introduction, hash machine learning natural language processing, hash user intent, and hash technical is becoming even more important. What are these hashes? Because they're not different pages, like what we saw on the other results where basically Google is saying, hey, we, we're just showing you the entity uh, here. We're showing you the home page that represents this business because we know that it's likely uh, related to maternity photography in Columbia, but there's other pages on this website that you may be interested in. Here are some options. Whereas in this case, if we click on one of these, you'll see that it will actually take us to a section of that page. And this is done with an anchor, an HTML anchor. All right, so let's just spend a little bit of time here to talk about how these uh, these site links appear and whether you have any influence over them. And unfortunately, the short answer is that you cannot directly influence what Google puts as site links. You can't decide, like you can't go and check the pages that you want to be site links uh, so that Google will use those. In fact, they don't give you any input on what you think they should use. Like a meta description, for example, is mostly just a suggestion for Google on what to use as the description in the snippet, but they don't always use it. Sometimes they'll write their own. Whereas with a, a site link, you don't even have the option to write a default. Google is just going to choose for you. Now, what are some of the factors that may go into Google choosing these? Let's look at a few things now. So first of all, you have the title of the page itself. All right, so if I were to go to one of these pages, 
I could look and see what is the title. It says Portraits in Portland, Oregon, Dylan and How M. Howell Photography. That's the title. You have the headings for the page, particularly the H1. So we can look here and it says Portraits in Portland, Oregon. You could use a, a tool like Open SEO Stats to actually see if we look at page info, what is the H1. In this case, it's not found, it's an H2. Uh, but you get the idea, often headings may be something that Google uses to determine the anchors for the site links. Uh, they may use the main navigation text, so the text in the main navigation itself. So in here we have wedding. Notice how here it uses weddings and not wedding. And I looked all over this site and couldn't find a place where it specifically said weddings. It could be that there's anchors on other pages, uh, which is the next thing that I was going to mention, internal links. So maybe all around your site, whenever you use the word weddings, you typically link back to this page and Google has picked up after crawling your site that a lot of pages are referencing this page with the word weddings. That could be one way that they're determining site links. Uh, there could be a couple of other things. They, they could be using data that people are uh, attaching to a branded search. So maybe people search Dylan Howell Photography Weddings or Dylan Howell SEO for Photographers or Dylan Howell Photography Portland Elopement Photography. Maybe people are searching for those things. And so Google determines those are topics that are popular with this brand. They may be just looking at how popular those pages are across this domain in general. There's a lot of different things and Google doesn't give us exactly the formula that they're using for determining which pages to show as site links or which text to use as the heading for those site links. Typically, the uh, text that goes below the heading here comes from the meta description. It may come from any text on the page though. All right. so. If we can't influence them directly, but we know that we can use those things that I've just mentioned, page titles, navigation, headings for the pages, number of internal links and the text, the anchor text for those internal links, and just the popularity of the page. Um, is there a way that we can get rid of undesired site links? Now, there, there's... There used to be a, a feature in Search Console or Webmaster Tools that was called Demote Site Links. It's no longer around. If you've ever heard someone say you can just go into Search Console and ask them to um, remove it, that was a feature at one time. They don't have it anymore. However, you still can go into Search Console. I'll pull it over here so we can look at it. And if you look under uh, Legacy Tools and Reports, you'll have Removals. Now, if there is a URL that is a site link that is something that you don't want showing up at all in search, it's not just that it's a bad site link, but it's like maybe an image attachment page or a tag archive that you've no indexed, or maybe it's a pricing guide that you didn't want anyone to be able to find or something like that, you can ask Google to remove the URL. Now, notice the language here says it's a temporary removal. Uh, they'll typically remove it, I think it's for 90 days, and then they'll decide whether or not they want to re-index that uh, page. Now, if you've already set it to no index, it's, some, it's sometimes the case that Google has it in the index, but they haven't decided to take it out based on your no index request, but removing it here will basically permanently keep it out if you set a meta no index on that page. So you can still use the temporary hide to try to remove site links that you don't want showing up in search at all. However, if it's just a site link that you don't want, say for example, Dylan doesn't want SEO for photographers showing up here. Instead, he wanted his uh, venue guide to show up here. There's no very clear way to do that. You can only hope that it's a popular term or a popular page on your site, you can use it in your main navigation, you can use it in sub navigation, you can make sure that there's plenty of internal pages pointing to it with the right kind of anchor text. All of the things that we've discussed here are ways that you can try to influence these site links, but there is no direct way to influence site links. All right, now over to you. Have you ever found any other tricks for manipulating site links? Do you have any other questions about site links? What else do you want to talk about? Leave a comment below uh, with anything related to site links, and I'll see you on the next video.